good afternoon students welcome back to your english language class yesterday we were discussing about the verbs and we also discussed the different types of verb that is the main verb and the auxiliary verbs okay yesterday we discussed about what a main verb is and what are verbs okay so to the topic that we are going to discuss today is auxiliary verbs now auxiliary verbs are again divided into two types that is primary auxiliary verbs and modal auxiliaries okay so the first one is auxiliary verbs primary auxiliary now what is primary auxiliary what we need to know about primary auxiliary is that we have the three words which is used as primary auxiliaries example be have and do these three words are called as primary auxiliary verbs now they have different forms in present tense and past tense so the different forms of be have and do are first one is be the present form of be can be used can be written as is am are the past form of be will be was and were then the next word is then the next helping verb is have have present form is has and have the past form of have is had then the next helping verb is do the present tense the present form of do is does and do and the past form of the helping verb do is did now why am i calling it helping verb because primary auxiliary verbs are also called as helping verbs now what is their purpose what is their function now these primary auxiliary verbs actually helps us to form a perfect verb tense a correct verb tense now what is tense tense tells us about the time time when the action took place so with the use of these helping verbs we can easily identify we can easily mention we can easily convey a message that the action took place at what time whether it took place in the past it is taking time at present or will it take place in the future now this is one purpose the other purpose of helping verb is to show how many person and what is the should be the number what is the number of person in a sentence whether we are talking about singular subject or we are talking about plural subject that time also helping verb is very important okay example i told you the different forms of be have and do so we are going to take example for be only for be i said is am are for present now is and am they are used for singular subject but are is used for plural subject again when it was about present tense was and were are the past form of be was is used for singular subject were is used for plural subject okay so all these you will one, learn once again in the chapters of tense also so for now we are just going to learn the basic rules what are primary auxiliaries and what are modal auxiliaries so for now we just need to understand that there are three words which are called as primary auxiliary verbs and they have different forms in present tense and past tense be have and do okay <clears throat> what is their purpose their purpose is to show the number and person of its subject and also they tell us about the correct verb tense okay so that is the use of primary auxiliary verbs now what are modal auxiliaries modal auxiliaries are words like can could shall should will would may might must these all are words which are used as modal auxiliaries now when we use shall that time we are having we think shall is used with the first person to show future action okay while will is used with the second and third person okay shall is always used with the first person whereas will is used with the second and third person now what is the difference between shall should will would 
Now, whenever we are confirmed, whenever we know, whenever we are sure that a thing has to take place, that time we make use of will. But when we are little sure, unsure about whether it will take place or not, that time we make use of would. Okay? That is the difference between shall and would. Shall, should, will, would. These all are the differences. Again, I shall. I shall meaning I am unsure. Shall is a little unsure. A way, a way of saying that when I am unsure. Should again the same thing when I am unsure. But the difference between will and shall is that will stands for when we are sure. Shall stands for when I am unsure whether my answer is in yes or no. I am not knowing the exact answer whether I will be doing it, I shall be doing it. Now I am not sure whether I will be doing it or not. Now when I make a statement that I will do it, that time I am sure that this work will be done. But when I say a statement with shall, that time I am not sure whether it will be done or not. Okay. So there are different words. I am not telling you about these model auxiliaries, but I am just telling you, giving you an idea what is the difference between shall and will. But the model auxiliaries that we write, model auxiliaries that we use are words like may, can, could, should, may, might, must. These all are model auxiliaries which we often use in our sentences. So these are model auxiliaries. I gave you the difference between shall and will and I also gave you a few examples of model auxiliaries. I will be sending you the notes so you can go through the notes and come to know what is the difference between the model auxiliaries and what is primary auxiliaries. Read it once again and then if you have any problem we will discuss that in the next live class. So that's all for today. Thank you.